Back after the highly successful missions to study the moon, Sun, Mars, India is now venturing to unravel the mysteries of the black hole and neutron stars. To understand more about this unique space-based observatory, NDTV science editor Pallav Bagla spoke to noted astrophysicist Dr. Varun Balero, Balera, who explains why the scientists are excited about this unique mission. The Indian Space Agency is on a roll. There was a successful Chandrayaan-3 mission, followed by a mission to the Sun, Aditya L1. And now, ISRO is planning to launch a satellite dedicated to study black holes, neutron stars, and stuff like that. I have with me Professor Varun Halerao. He's an astrophysicist. IIT Bombay and somebody who understands black holes, neutron stars and all about why India is doing ExpoSat. Uh, so why are we doing ExpoSat and what is likely to come out? It's very complicated, it seems. So the universe is a really strange and wonderful place. It is full of things that we can barely even imagine. Things like black holes, which are so dense that not even light escapes. And they, of course, are captivating not just for uh, the mystery that surrounds them, but also for all the physics that they can teach us. You may remember things about the God particle or the Higgs boson, which was discovered using this very complex ex uh, experiment called the Large Hadron Collider. And that's the highest energies that we can reach on Earth. But what happens to the universe at even higher extreme conditions when the magnetic fields which are billions and billions of times stronger than that of Earth, when there are gravity that is much higher, when densities are so high that even a spoonful of matter will weigh as much as Mount Everest. So that's the world of neutron stars and black holes and compact objects as we call it. These are all remnants of stellar deaths. And we really like to study them to understand the extreme physics of how the universe functions. We've been doing this with a slew of telescopes, including the uh, Indian AstroSat, which was launched just over eight years ago, and a variety of telescopes launched by various other countries in the world. And there is only so much that we can learn from them. In particular, what we like to see is something we call the spectrum of an object, which is just like the sun uh, breaks, uh, the light of the sun breaks into a rainbow when you pass it through a prism. So that is a spectrum. And we also see how they uh, change in brightness with time. And we then construct physics or mathematics models to explain what is going on. And we have come quite far in understanding these objects. But we are now at a stage where we have still a few models left which can all explain what we observe. So how do we really figure out which of those is really the physics that governs that? And the answer to that is in study of something called X-ray polarization. Polarization is something that we do actually encounter in daily life. So if you go to, for example, watch a 3D movie, then the glasses that they give you have uh, optical polarizing filters on both eyes. One is vertical, one is horizontal. So here we want to study X-ray polarization, which allows us to probe conditions very, very close to these objects. And that is something you can't do without that. These objects are so far away that even with the most powerful telescopes, they still appear like a point. So ExpoSat is India's mission to study these objects and understand the craziest extremes of the universe. Yeah. Now, what is very, very important here is that this is only the second mission in the whole world that will have the capability of doing this. And it works in a band different from the previous mission. So India is not going to have any competition in this area for quite some time. The only mission which has been done has been done by NASA. And is it correct that uh, India is going to be looking at uh, dying stars and remnants of dying stars? And how do you study all of that from a small satellite like ExpoSat? Yes, indeed. So uh, what we are going to study is actually what we call the remnants of stars. So if you have a star like the sun, um, we think of the sun as this huge object next to us, but by universe standards, the sun is a very average star. There are more massive stars, 8 times, 10 times, 20 times, even 100 times more massive than the sun. And these massive stars blow up in spectacular explosions called supernovae. So the supernova emits as much light at, at its peak as an entire galaxy. 
Now these supernovae at the end leave behind these black holes and neutron stars. And astrophysics in this sense is a very uh, unique physical science. So when we think of physical sciences, you think of physics or chemistry. Experiments are conducted, you go into a lab, you pick up something, you weigh it, you bend it, you break it, you try different things. In astrophysics, I can't quite go to a star, light a wick and say, Chalo, boom, blow up as a supernova so that I can study you. Right? I can't even reach the object. They are so far away that even light takes millions of years from there to reach us. So the only way we can study, the rule of astronomy is look, don't touch. So we really have to look at it from far away. And what we try to do is understand what the light is telling us. So in some sense, to give you a rough analogy, suppose you are in a forest and you are trying to study birds. So the first time you are hearing the call of a bird, you wouldn't know what it is. But over time, just by listening to the calls, the sounds of those birds, you know where a bird is. You could even tell if there is one or more of them and which bird it is, what species it is. So what we are doing in some sense is similar. By hearing all of this, or uh, also in some sense like a forensic scientist. So here, a star which died maybe millions of years ago, we are going to the scene of death, uh, but not literally. We are observing that scene from far from away. And by using whatever evidence we can collect with a variety of telescopes, X-ray telescopes, optical telescopes, uh, radio telescopes like JMRT, by using all of that information, we are trying to piece together what really happened in the moments of the star's death, but also the extreme environment that exists around that corpse or the dead object or the remnant of the star. I think corpse is a bit too morbid. Let's call it a remnant, which is what the technical term is anyway. Writing that India did a mission to the moon, then following up with a mission to study the sun, and now looking at the larger universe, exciting time for scientists like you? Oh, it is a fantastic time to be an astronomer in India. There are also other important projects that we are doing, the most famous ones being gravitational wave detectors like LIGO India. We are participating in a, a major international radio collaboration called the Square Kilometer Array, another optical called the 30 meter telescope. So. Uh, India is really shoulder to shoulder with the best countries in the world and we are leading in certain areas when it comes to studies like this. And all of this is helping us in two ways. Uh, first is that there are immediate technological benefits that we get from doing missions like this which then spill over into various other areas. But we are also training the next generation of scientists. Now, um, if you are sitting at home and you order a cab or you order food delivery, you quickly, everyone is used to setting a pin on their GPS now. Now, the only reason we can do that is that 110 years ago, Einstein was sitting and wondering about, oh, what is gravity? Are space and time really separate? Unko, he, he didn't feel at that time that, you know, 100 years from now, somebody is going to use my theories to order pizza from home. And that's the beauty of fundamental research that, we try to understand how the universe works and because we live in this universe, all of that understanding eventually is going to find applications which are not evident today. GPS was not evident when Einstein was working on it, but 100 years from now, 100 years from Einstein, for instance, we can't imagine living without a GPS anymore. So that is going to give us new science for the universe? ExpoSat will definitely help us understand things that have never been understood before because we never had the tools. You can imagine that if you are a doctor and you get uh, in your hospital, you obtain the x-ray machine for the first time. That is going to give you a new look of the patient's body of a kind that you had never seen before. Similarly, the studies of x-ray polarization that we can do and ExpoSat did pioneer a bit in this area. We were able to measure polarization, for example, of the crab pulsar or a lot of stellar deaths called gamma ray bursts. But we haven't been able to study these particular sets of objects because it requires a telescope more specialized and more sensitive. And Astrosat is going, uh, Exposat, sorry, is going to be the only telescope in the world that can do this. There's no competition in the foreseeable future. So it will not just be important for Indian scientists, for, but scientists from all over the world are going to be clamoring to get their hands on ExpoSat data. Thanks a lot for speaking to me, uh, Dr. Varun Bhalerao, and giving us details on this very important Indian scientific observatory, the ExpoSat mission. Uh, thanks a lot for speaking to Palav Bhagra. Welcome. This is NDTV.